Okay, here's what the average American history book has to say on the subject of African American history. It all started about this time in this place where these people met those people. These people saw an opportunity to make piles of this stuff by taking those people to a new place and putting them to work, whether or not they wanted to go. In this new place, let's just call it America, those people were forced to do things such as this, this, and that under a constant threat of that, that, and this. Turn the page and we start seeing people like him, him, her, her, and them. The next few pages cover the whole civil rights movement culminating in the election of this guy. And that's about all she wrote. Wait a minute. They just covered about 400 years of history in a few short pages. There has to be more to it than that. Well, if you get the feeling there must be some missing pages out there, you're absolutely right. And we're going to help you find them. There are a number of great inventions that help to shape the world that we share today. If you ask someone to name some of man's greatest inventions, you are likely to hear such things as the wheel, fire, the printing press, the loom, the automobile, the personal computer, powered flight, and more. Modern society depends on so many great inventions that it's hard to name them all. Can you think of anything we missed? There is at least one. Okay, I'll help you out. What about telecommunications? When you think about it, telecommunications is the one thing that makes modern society possible. Without real-time transmission of voice and data, the world as we know it simply would not exist. The father of telecommunications as we know it was this, the telegraph. A telegraph is a network of stations connected by wire over long distances. To send a message, a telegraph operator uses a spring-loaded knob that, when tapped, sends an electrical current through the wire to the station on the other end. On the receiving end, the electrical signal is used to force a needle to tap a plate, thereby making a sound. In some versions of the telegraph, the needle was replaced by a pencil that left marks on a paper scroll. Using an established code of dots and dashes on paper, taps are silenced by ear. The sender and receiver could communicate across long distances in real time. As revolutionary as that was, it had one fundamental flaw. The wire was only good for sending one message at a time, and each message had to be spelled out letter by letter. Surely there must have been a way to get more information across the telegraph wire than that. Here is where our first telecom brother comes in. Granville T. Woods, born April 23, 1856 in Columbus, Ohio, was the son of three blacks. In his youth, he had little formal education. As a young adult, he moved to New York where he took jobs in the railroad industry. While in New York, Woods became fascinated with electricity and electrical devices. He began taking classes with the belief that electricity was the way of the future. He was right. The invention of the telephone proved that you could send voice communication by wire but there was no way to use existing telegraph cable to send a voice communication. That is, until Woods solved the problem. Woods' solution was to engineer the first multiplex telegraph system. The multiplex telegraph concept, also known as telegraphony, allows both telegraph and voice communications to share the same line. This technology turned out to be extremely valuable in the railroad business in which Woods worked. Wood's multiplex telegraph made it possible for railroad engineers to communicate with dispatchers and engineers on other trains. The result was a huge improvement in railroad safety at a time when the railroad industry had become somewhat accident prone. In the years following the deployment of Wood's invention, the number of train wrecks went down significantly. Wood's, like most black inventors of his day, often faced challenges to his patent claims. The multiplex telegraph was no exception. Woods found himself having to defend his patent in court. The challenger? None other than Thomas Edison himself. In each case, Woods was forced to prove that his invention was not a product of someone else's work. 
In each case, he was victorious. Eventually, Edison offered Woods a place in his organization. Woods declined the offer. Over his lifetime, Woods was awarded over 50 technology patents. Most of Woods' inventions were related to railway systems. Woods died in 1910 at the age of 53 in New York. Over 100 years after Granville T. Woods solved the problem of how to carry voice communication over telegraph wire, another African-American engineer was faced with a similar problem. The new problem was how do we transmit multiple streams of wireless voice communications in order to make cellular service a more commercially viable product? Solving that problem fell to African-American engineer Jesse Russell. Russell, the newly appointed director of cell phone development at AT&T Bell Labs, was a graduate of Tennessee State University. He later earned a master's degree in electrical engineering from Stanford University. Prior to his role at Bell Labs, Russell had become one of the nation's foremost experts at digital signal processing. The problem that Russell faced was that AT&T was losing large sums of money with its cellular service. The equipment was bulky, expensive, and primarily designed for installation into an automobile. This meant that people could only use the phone if they happened to be in their car. Russell's answer to that was to push for the development of smaller equipment that could be carried on one's person. However, a smaller cell phone would only solve half the problem. For the cell phone service to be profitable for the company, a lot of people had to be able to use it at the same time. Therefore, making the phone itself smaller would increase its use only to run into a capacity limit. The existing technology available to AT&T simply could not support enough simultaneous calls to turn a profit. Once again, Russell had the answer. Using his experience in digital signal processing, Russell showed his engineers how to employ ways to digitize speech, transmit the data, and reconstruct the sound at the other end. These methods allowed the company to quadruple the capacity of their existing network. So in theory, a higher network capacity combined with a smaller cell phone could make the whole business profitable. The only remaining question was, would enough people actually pay for the service to make the venture worthwhile? Russell's answer was yes. He believed all they needed to do was to put the phone on the person. Russell knew that if the phone rang, the person would answer it. When the person answered it, the company would make money. The irony is that no one had a clue just how right Jesse Russell would turn out to be. The technology that Russell and his engineers developed became known as 2G. Russell himself is often given the distinction of being the father of digital cellular network. From the invention of the telegraph to the development of the first digital cellular network, African-American inventors have played a key role in building the technology that shapes our world. Although this episode focused on Granville Woods and Jesse Russell, there are a number of other Blacks who hold related technology patents. When you have time, you may want to Google African-American inventors. You may be surprised at how many people you may know of invented things that you would never associate them with. Meanwhile, the next time you are safely riding in the train, and your cell phone happens to ring, think of the brothers in telecom when you answer it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe for similar content.